Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to the Vice Chancellor's Research Excellence Award Ceremony, where we recognize the accomplishments of our top researchers. It is time to celebrate. Let me begin by inviting our President and Vice Chancellor, Professor Carolyn Evans, to the podium. Thank you, Mario, and good morning, everybody. Could I begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the lands on which we meet? We here are today at the Conservatorium on the lands of the Turrbal and the Yagara people, but you may be watching this from lands across Australia, and indeed, because we're online, potentially from across the world. Wherever you are, you're very welcome. Could I also particularly welcome and thank a few people who are here today? Our Chancellor, Mr. Henry Smurden, who is always an incredible support for Griffith University staff uh, and the cheerleader in chief for their achievements. Could I thank all of those who were engaged in nominating, in supporting and in judging these awards. It's been a hard year. It's still a hard year. Everybody's got a lot of work to do. But that so many of you took the time to reach out, to nominate somebody else, to be involved in judging, uh, just shows the Griffith spirit, the Griffith values, that we want to, as Mario said, take time to celebrate, to say so many are achieving so much here in this university. And could I also thank the many people who are here today who've allowed this to go ahead online. It is a very complicated arrangement and we're very grateful to all of those who've been involved in the logistics and organisations behind the scene. 2020 has been a year like no other, but in some ways it has still extraordinarily had a continuity to it. People have continued to undertake meaningful, important, impactful research. You're going to hear some really inspiring stories today about research that's having an impact globally, about research that's making a difference to people's lives right here in the communities in which we're part about research from wonderful young researchers just at the start of what we sure is going to be a brilliant career, of research from our research leaders who have decades of experience behind them and who bring such wisdom and insight and capacity to mentor with them. It has been a hard year, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't stop and celebrate all that has been exceptional, extraordinary and remarkable in the work that our researchers have continued to do under the most trying circumstances. Some of our researchers have had to pivot very quickly and start engaging in research directly relevant to COVID. That's both its health aspects in terms of vaccines and treatments, but also many of our social sciences and humanities colleagues who've been thinking through issues of ethics, of mental health, of domestic uh, violence, some of the issues that come with being in lockdown, suicide prevention. So many people have pivoted but other people have continued to work on critical research which will remain critical. Uh, we do have to think not just about today, but about tomorrow and about five years' time and 10 years' time. Our researchers are involved in creating the sort of society that we want to be part of. We're incredibly proud of them. We're sorry not to be able to do the traditional celebration with family and friends and colleagues who would normally come along to these Research Excellence Awards. But there are some advantages of this in that because we are online, many people are going to be able to see these awards perhaps for the first time uh, from their offices or from their bedrooms or wherever they're working at the moment. It's also the first year that we're going to honour people for research engagement. This has always been important at Griffith and it is fitting that in this year when we have done so much to try and support the communities of which we're part, to keep partnerships going in the most difficult of circumstances, that we acknowledge those researchers who work closely with research partners, be those from industry, government, community organisations. So look forward to sharing with you over the next period of time a celebration of some of the outstanding research achievements that have been undertaken here at Griffith. But I also want to acknowledge as I do that, today we're going to focus on those who have been nominated and awarded. There are so many researchers, a depth and breadth of researchers across the whole of the Griffith Institution that have allowed our research efforts to keep going this year. I want to thank you. I want to congratulate you and I want to assure you that into the future Griffith will continue to be committed to being a place of research excellence, a place where research matters, where researchers are supported and where the impact of our research continues to resonate locally, nationally and globally. 
I look forward to sharing with you now some of the great researchers who've been nominated for the 2020 Vice-Chancellor's Research Excellence Awards. Thank you, Vice-Chancellor, for those inspiring comments. We will now begin the presentation of the awards, and I will read the following nominations. The nominations for the Award for Excellence in the Early Career Research category are Dr. Karen Hardy, Griffith Criminology Institute, Dr. Timo Dietrich, Social Marketing at Griffith, Dr. Med Fahadul Isla, Institute for Glycomics, Dr. Fang Fan, Queensland Micro Nanotechnology Center, and Dr. David Saxby, Menzies Health Institute, Queensland. Congratulations to all of these outstanding early career researchers. You are the future here at Griffith. The Early Career Researcher Award for Excellence goes to Dr. Huang Fan. Thank you, Vice Chancellor and Deputy Vice Chancellor, for offering me this award, which I did not expect. I would like to thank my supervisors, my colleagues, my students, and of course, my family for supporting me not only in my research career, but also in my life. This is a challenging year for all of us, but whenever there is challenges, there will be opportunities and there will be solutions. I think this is still a very valuable time for us to rethink about how we can support our students, how we can connect with our collaborator, how we can manage time and keep our project moving on, even working from home. I hope that this COVID will be over soon and Griffith will welcome more and more international students and domestic students to our university. And looking at the future, I'm very excited about the research opportunity here at Griffith, especially with the new program like Spotlight and Beacon, where we can connect with more Griffith researchers from multidisciplinary and to have more collaboration with external and international collaborators. And thank you very much. We will keep hard working to make a Griffith a beautiful place for everyone to come. Thank you. Congratulations, family. The following are nominated for the Award for Excellence for the Mid-Career Researcher who has demonstrated an outstanding record of achievement. The nominees are Associate Professor Don Adams from the Autism Center of Excellence, Associate Professor Catherine Koo Latimore, Griffith Institute for Tourism, Dr. Manisha Pandey, Institute for Glycomics, Dr. Christopher Brown, Australian Rivers Institute. Associate Professor Lauren Ball, Menzies Health Institute, Queensland. Well, congratulations to all those nominated from such a wonderful and wide range of disciplines. The Mid-Career Research Award for Excellence goes to Associate Professor Lauren Ball. Thank you very much and congratulations to all of the winners today and to those who are nominated. I feel quite privileged and honoured to be here in this company. This award has extra special meaning this year on what has been a tough year for us all. I can only imagine the tough conversations that have been happening behind me with regards to research structure at Griffith, its funding nationally, as well as its place in society moving forward. This award shows me that what we're doing in health and what we're doing in nutrition is working and we're consistently improving the reputation of Griffith University when it comes to research. But really, it's Griffith University that supports us. And I couldn't love my job the way I do without the, the support that I receive each and every day. So for some light entertainment, I've made an acrostic poem <laughs> about what it's like to be a researcher at Griffith University. So here goes, bear with me. G is for growing. Griffith Research Leadership and Services support staff over many years and unlocks their blossoming potential. R is for relevance. Griffith helps researchers partner with people within and beyond the university so that our work helps real people who have real lives. 
I is for impact. We have a research and innovation plan, including the beacons and the spotlight schemes, which means that we are permission to be bold and visionary in our work. We can have impact in communities, socially, economically and culturally. F is for fun. We are supported to love our jobs, and that's a pretty amazing thing to say during a global pandemic. The next F is fabric. The fabric of our research are our PhD students, and I'm proud of the way that Griffith is better recognising and supporting their efforts. I is for infrastructure. Our researchers have the best of both worlds with access to campus facilities, as well as support to work comfortably from home. For many of us, our daily work has never felt better. T is for transforming lives, and that's the vision of Griffith University. Our research adds knowledge and understanding to create a future that benefits all. And finally, H is for home. The grass isn't greener anywhere else, and our culture means that our colleagues feel like family. And that's why I've been here as a student and a staff member for over a decade. The journey is only just beginning, and I'm excited about what lays in store for us all. So thank you once again. Congratulations, Lauren. Nominations for the Award of, for Excellence in the Research Supervision category are Professor Sarah Baker, Griffith Center for Social and Cultural Research. Dr. Benjamin Liu, Department of Accounting, Finance and Economics. Professor Mark von Einstein, AO, Institute for Glycomics. Professor Rod Connolly, Australian Rivers Institute. Associate Professor Kyra Hamilton, School of Applied Psychology. Well, congratulations to all of those who have been shortlisted. And thank you to all of you who've been doing such great work in ensuring that our research students continue to feel supported and that their careers are moving forward this year. It's a really important role. The Research Supervision Award for Excellence goes to Professor Rod Connolly. Thank you, Vice-Chancellor. I'm very appreciative of this award. It's for research supervision, and I think of that as research mentoring. And my lab is highly collaborative and collegiate, so really it's for the research fellows and the research students. Although it's me standing here, and uh, I'd also thank the institute that provides the structure in which we can work, and, for, and Griffith more broadly. There are a few things we do that help careers along, and in our lab, uh, as I say, very collegiate. And one of the things we do is we try to embed diversity training. That's diversity in all its guises. We also make sure that each student has a placement somewhere in, in another leading lab. That's typically internationally, although it can be CSIRO, for example, in Australia. In terms of impact, well, yes, we like to publish quality papers. That's still part of career development and very important for finding jobs. But more broadly, we try to align our research with, for example, the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And then in terms of being on the cutting edge of technological development, we work with industry, that's, that's businesses and that's NGOs working around the world, to make sure that we are using the big data analytics and the artificial intelligence that's demanded now in my area, which is marine science. So for example, at the moment we have students actively working with industry on using automation, developing the automation to identify animals in underwater videos. And there are lots of applications for industry and government for that. So, for me personally, I am really thrilled to work with the younger minds of the early career researchers. They certainly challenge us all the time in a good way. Uh, so the lab is constantly questioning uh, and, and making us question and guess. And frankly, I wouldn't have it any other way. So thank you. Congratulations, Rod. The next generation of researchers is in good hands. The following are nominated for the Award for Excellence for the Research Group or Team category. Popular Music Heritage Team. The team members are Professor Sarah Baker, Dr. Lauren Ishvanditi, 
Dr. Rafael Novak, and Dr. Zelmari Cantillon. The Systems Modeling Group. The team members are Dr. Oz Sahin, Professor Rodney Stewart, Professor Brendan Mackey, Dr. Eduardo Bertoni, Dr. Emilia Suprin, Mr. Henki Salim, and Mr. Stefan McCaskill. The Griffith Center for Biomedical and Rehabilitation Engineering, GCOR. The team members are Professor David Lloyd, Professor Randy Bindra, Dr. David Saxby, Dr. Laura Diamond, Dr. Claudio Pizzolato, Dr. Chris Carty, Professor Rod Barrett, Dr. Matthew Bourne, Dr. Michael Simmons, Professor Jeff Tansley, and Dr. Sam Canning. Congratulations to those outstanding teams. So much that we achieve is achieved with others, and it's great to recognise that during these awards. The Research Group or Team Award for Excellence goes to the Griffith Centre for Biomedical and Rehabilitation Engineering, GCOR, and Professor David Lloyd will speak on behalf of the team. This is quite a surprise. Um, thank you, Vice-Chancellor, Deputy Vice-Chancellors. Great to get this award. Um, GCOR started as a, an idea back in 2015 now to try and join um, the health care industry, the actual application of it, to the STEAM people, the science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics people to disrupt that industry. And so we represent a whole range of different STEAM professionals and health professionals to try and bring these people together to disrupt their industry and to create disruptive new solutions to some um, outstanding problems. Um, we unite a whole lot of different people um, from the basic sciences to health professionals. We look at things from a biological perspective, from a physics perspective and mathematical. And I think it's important that we unite all those things together with some of the brand new technologies that we have available to us now. Um, indeed, Griffith University has been fantastic in providing support for these, the infrastructure which is necessary through the Menzies Health Institute Queensland and through the Advanced Design and Prototyping Technology Institute, which brings together a lot of these brand new technologies that we can harness to change the health industry. Um, the most important thing for GCOR, as it's known by, is the team. We think of ourselves as a family is that we work together as a family, from PhD students to early career researchers, mid-careers, to some of the older fellows like me and older women who come together to make GCOR happen. And it is this family which is, has a great deal of fun, but a lot of passion in driving our way forward. So I thank you and I thank Griffith University for this award. Thanks, guys. Congratulations, David, to you and your team. Nominations for the Award for Excellence in the Research Engagement category are Professor Ross Hummel, AO, Griffith Criminology Institute, Dr. Joan Carlini, Department of Marketing, Professor Michael Good, AO, Institute for Glycomics, Dr. Maria Fernanda Adama Vivanco from the Australian Rivers Institute, Dr. Michael Simmons, from the Menzies Health Institute, Queensland. As I said earlier, this is the first year that we're awarding in this category, and every one of these nominees has a wonderful story of a really significant partnership behind it. The Research Engagement Award for Excellence goes to Professor Ross Hommel. Well, it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, that I'm greatly honoured to receive this award. And I've told all my colleagues that really I'm here on their behalf as much as on my own. Uh, and I'm going to actually read the names of my team in a moment. But I'd also like to acknowledge the support of the entire university community for the sort of work I do, which is working with communities and disadvantaged groups to try and shift the dial, as we say, uh, to improve the well-being of children, particularly those living in socially disadvantaged communities. 
Uh, that sort of work can't be done by any individual, no matter how heroic and visionary. It takes a team. Uh, you could probably summarise the goal of what we're trying to do, which is to bring the science into service, to bridge that gap uh, between the worlds of research and the universities and the busy, tumultuous, chaotic world of communities, community organisations and, dare I say, government departments. Uh, at the moment, universities are, it seems, retreating or being forced to retreat from direct engagement with the groups that actually make a difference, the frontline professionals and the inspired community workers who have a vision and work tirelessly to raise the funds to achieve their vision. We need to work more closely in universities to engage with, um, with those groups and those individuals, but in a way which brings the fruits of our research to bear. We, we're no use in a university unless we can value add, unless we can bring the insights, the methodologies and the tools uh, from our research in a practical way to assist community organisations, community agencies, government departments to actually achieve the mission that they've stated that they want to achieve. Uh, and as I said, that would not, none of that work is possible uh, by an individual. So I'd particularly like to thank, uh, well actually I should thank my immediate supervisor, Professor Scott, ha Scott Harrison, uh, PVC Arts, Education and Law, because through his support, um, the work of our team continues to be possible. Uh, I, but I'd particularly like to mention my close colleagues, Kate Freiberg and Sarah Branch, who uh, have been with me now. Kate has been with me for 20 years on recurrent funding, which um, that is soft money, uh, which hasn't been easy to achieve, but is a testimony to the quality of her work. But I'd also like to mention my, my friends and colleagues from across a range of disciplines at Griffith, uh, Professor Emeritus Neil Dempster, Claire Tilbury, Matt Manning and Gabriel Wong, two of my PhD graduates who are now uh, having successful careers at ANU, uh, Bev Flukinger, uh, Tara McGee, Greer Johnson, uh, Jacqueline Hommel, Sama Lo Choi, Lisa Thompson, who's just been awarded her PhD officially, congratulations Dr Thompson, uh, and adjunct fellow Dr Brian Bumbarger, another Griffith graduate, uh, PhD graduate. So, it's a group effort. The university has been the incubator for this work in research engagement, and I am personally thrilled to be part of a university that takes social impact uh, and societal well-being uh, right at the centre of its mission. It's been a real privilege to work for almost 30 years at Griffith uh, and to engage in the sort of work I do and to be so fantastically supported. So thank you to both of you and to the university community. Congratulations, Ross. And now the final category. Nominations for the Award for Excellence in the Research Leadership category are Professor Susan Dennison, Griffith Criminology Institute, Professor Annika Fitzgerald, Department of Business, Strategy and Innovation, Professor Sue Berners Price, Institute for Glycomics, Professor Yongchen Gao, Institute for Integrated and Intelligence Systems. Well, congratulations to these people and to all our research leaders who managed to keep us on track this year. There were so many great nominations that in the end, the panel couldn't split the top two. So there were two equally outstanding uh, nominations and therefore two awards for research leadership excellence this year. Professor Susan Dennison and Professor Sue Bernis price Thank you, Vice-Chancellor and Deputy Vice-Chancellor. I also want to extend my thanks to uh, Professor Scott Harrison, uh, the PVC in the Arts, Education and Law Group, who put me forward from the group um, for this nomination. And there are so many terrific leaders in the AEL group that I've learned from over the years, and I want to acknowledge them as well. When I was an early career um, academic, uh, a professor from outside Griffith said to me, don't stay at Griffith too long. Leave after at least five years because staying at one institution for too long isn't good for academic growth. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not because I ignored that advice. And I've been here for just a few months short of 20 years. It's been a place where I have received immeasurable support, uh, both in terms of my career development, leadership opportunities, 
but also other important things in life like managing a family and, and juggling work and life. Um, I want to acknowledge three people from uh, the School of Criminology and Criminal Justice who have provided me with great leadership mentoring, uh, as well as a lot of support over my time. The first is Ross Hommel, who you've just heard from. He was on my original interview panel and from day one has told me that my research is important. He's also taught me that if you want to make change out there in the world, you have to leave your office, get out there in the community, galvanise people, work really hard at solving complex problems. The second person is Anna Stewart, who taught me to always seize opportunities, uh, that everybody is a leader, even if they're not in a formal leadership position. So always think about the ways that you can lead others. And thirdly, she told me that uh, the purpose of having meetings isn't just to organise projects. It's critical in building strong research teams and building a strong culture around those teams. The third person is Janet Ransley, who showed me that it, a quiet leader can be a very effective leader and that leadership also involves great teamwork. She's also been a great source of sound advice over many years. So I'm really proud to have spent my career at Griffith so far and can, will continue to do so for hopefully many, many years. Uh, it's been a place of inspiration where I've been able to pursue the research that I think is important and a source of great mentoring um, over my time. I haven't achieved anything alone, uh, so everything um, that, that I have managed to do along my journey, um, I want to acknowledge the thanks to uh, my research teams, collaborators, colleagues, PhD students, the professional staff who provide support in so many ways, um, and also research partners out there in the community and out there in government, as well as my family, I can't forget to mention them, because together all of these people have made all the good things happen. Uh, and now I want to um, thank all and uh, congratulate the co-winner of this award and hand over to her for a few words. Thank you. Congratulations, Susan. Well, thank you very much, Vice-Chancellor, Deputy Vice-Chancellor Research. I'm truly honoured by the receipt of this award, and there are many people that I, I need to acknowledge. Now, Griffith is a really special place to me, and I've, I've had two different research careers here. And some will remember that I started my independent research career in 1990 in the School of Science on the Nathan campus, and that position was a half-time, three-year, fixed-term lectureship in chemistry. And I was attracted by Griffith because of its mission and its interdisciplinarity. And I saw it as the ideal place to build a research career in medicinal inorganic chemistry. And that environment, it provided a springboard for me to uh, leave Griffith. And 10 years later, I was appointed as professor of biological chemistry at the University of Western Australia. But just having heard from our previous speaker, I mean, I, I saw the opportunity to return to Griffith, um, and I came back in 2009 into a, a senior leadership role. And I would really like to thank Mark von Itzstein for his, his, uh, his vision and his leadership, and the invitation to join the Institute for Glycomics as a principal research leader, and to establish metalloglycomics as a new field of endeavor. So what is it? What is metalloglycomics? It's the study of the interaction of metal ions and metal-based drugs with carbohydrates. And remarkably, although both of these have important roles to play in biological systems, this area has been neglected. So Mark saw the opportunity to bring together my expertise in medicinal inorganic chemistry with the research focus of the Institute to apply new approaches to treatment and prevention of diseases from exploration of the structural and functional properties of carbohydrates or sugars. So I thank the growing band of researchers in the Institute who have joined me on this metalloglycomics journey over the past few years. And I particularly acknowledge an early career researcher, Dr. Anil Gawler, and my long-term collaborator, Professor Nick Farrell from Virginia Commonwealth University in the US for their contributions to this research. And I also thank members of my research groups at uh, Griffith and UWA over the course of my career for their fantastic work and contributions. 
But it's also really important to me that this award recognises my leadership of research training, as it sends a clear message that our higher degree research candidates are an important member of Griffith's research community, and the new strategic plan um, has a key action to better recognise the contribution of doctoral candidates as part of Griffith's research fabric. Now, I've calculated that since I, I became dean in 2012, I've conferred the degrees of around 2,200 HDR candidates, which is more than 50% of all of those from all time. And my team in the Griffith Graduate Research School know how much I enjoy signing those conferral letters and being the first person to use that title of doctor for our PhD candidates. And I've been very proud to have worked with colleagues across the university put in place strategies to enhance the HDR candidate experience. And I thank my fantastic team in GGRS for their dedication and the exceptional work they do every day to support the HDR cohort. And another great benefit of being a dean of a graduate school in Australia is that you become a member of the wonderful community of DDOGs who work collaboratively and tirelessly to raise the quality of research training in Australia. It's been a privilege to have served on the executive of the Australian Council of Graduate Research for the past six years and to have held the role of convener during the time when we've seen the sector transformed through the implementation of recommendations from the ECOLA review of Australia's research training system. And finally, to maintain an international research profile while holding down senior leadership roles for more than a decade, I have a sort of creative interpretation of the word or the term work-life balance. <laughs> and I really, really thank my husband, Rob, my daughter, Katie, for their understanding and their love and support. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Sue. And thank you, Vice Chancellor, for your assistance in the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude this ceremony by congratulating all the winners, all the nominees. You bring honor and recognition to Griffith University through the impact of your contributions. I am sure that you will all agree with me that this year's winners exemplify the values of Griffith University and the heights to which we aspire. Please join me once again in congratulating our nominees and our winners. That concludes our ceremony. Thank you for joining us today. Safe travels. <laughs>